What is up, y'all? Welcome back for another video. As y'all can see, I'm switching this up today. We're going to do a little interview. As y'all can see, I've linked up with a brother out here in Bali, Indonesia, and we're having a good time. But um, so a lot of you guys asked me, like, how did I become a digital nomad and just like different ways to make money. So, you know, I have my experiences, my background, but I feel like it's more valuable to you guys if I should talk about what other people do, you know, as well as myself, because there's people come from so many different backgrounds and so much opportunity out here. So I want to introduce y'all to the man Banks. Uh, millionaire, traveler, entrepreneur. And so, yeah, we're going to chop it up, man. Introduce yourself. Let's get it. It's, it's, a, it's an honor to even be on this YouTube video, um, you know, because two months ago, 60 days ago, I was actually prepping to travel and leave the country. And um, I ended up going on YouTube to this time, piping up, you know, the places that I wanted. It popped up on the, on the first day of YouTube. Um, you know, so I seen that he was strong, they were pure wider, like, wow, it's crazy. Um, and then, you know, he was talking about himself and I was actually getting ready to make that decision. So I studied his videos, I watched his videos and I was like, you know what, let me tap in with him once I get out there. And, um, you know, the rest is history. So if you don't know me, um, don't want to say too much about me. I'm just a, a entrepreneur out here. You know, I come from humble beginnings. You feel me? Single period. Um, grew up in New York, got, you know, pretty much moved down south when I was in the ninth grade. You know, my mom and my dad ended up splitting. And, you know, I basically had to be the man of the house at an early age, you know. So I think I started off selling candy in high school. And from there, you know, I got into multiple different business ventures. And, you know, I was able to, you know, make a lot of money, but also just see the world. So that's just a quick little short tip about me. You know, so I'm going to pass it back to you. For sure. So, uh, so you bought me two months ago. But, like, what made you begin to even, like, the journey to, like, consider being, like, overseas, like, how that come about? Cause like, you know, traveling, like everybody, you know, it's not for everybody. Everybody's not into the idea of coming overseas. So like, what piqued your interest to be, you know, even over here right now? Got you. Um, so I think the first time I came to Thailand, it was 2020. I'm actually came for my birthday, it was January 27th. And the day that I landed was the day that Kobe died. Kobe died on January 26th, 2020. And I remember when I landed, somebody's like, Kobe died. I'm like, what? Um, you know, so I guess the reason I decided to really travel was just, you know, this, this boy somewhere. Um, I never really traveled too much growing up and, you know, I ended up getting my passport. My ex-girlfriend actually bought me a flight to Thailand and I was like, you know, let's see what it's about. And, um, I went out there with, you know, one of my friends and I don't know, just seeing a new world. You know, I, I didn't really grow up seeing anything. You feel me? I used to catch a great house back and forth to New York for the summer. So, you know, once I got that passport, um, I checked some flights and that was just like one of the places I just wanted to go to. So yeah, that's kind of how I started off. And then from there, you know, I've traveled to like 14 countries in the past two and a half years. So it's been, it's been crazy just to see the environments and the different cultures out there in the world. That's dope. That's amazing. So one question I want to ask you since you've been so many places, um, one of the questions I get asked, like, you know, how, like, how do you, how are you treated? Do you feel safe in these places? Like, has there been any way you've been so far where you like as a black male, like this is the foreigner you didn't feel very safe or welcome like have you had any bad experiences um i feel like a lot of people steer a lot so i would say like you know it's been crazy but people look because you know we're you don't see a lot of black young travelers um so i can say i felt safe pretty much everywhere i think the only place that i didn't feel safe is when i went to czech republic i went to czech republic and that was probably the first place where i could say i I experienced some type of racism because they did not let me go inside their clubs. I couldn't go inside their bars. It was, it was just different. Um, you know, and I was actually with one of my friends who was from there, but the moment that I stepped up, they were like, no, he can't come in here. And I was like, what? You know, so that's probably the only place that I would probably tell you watching this. You might want to, you know, do some research before you go there, but everywhere else has been amazing. You know, people treat us just like they'll treat anybody. Um, they smile. You know, so I feel like everywhere I've been besides Czech Republic has probably been like amazing. I feel safe, except Mexico. I can't throw. Uh, when I went to Kid Cool last year, like Mexico's fun, but the cops out there definitely extorted us for some money, you know. So I could definitely say that was the first place where I've seen that the, the government was a little corrupt, you know. But other than that, I've been safe. I haven't had to watch over my shoulder. I haven't had no problems with anybody. So, yeah. Overall, I'll say everything's been cool. So now you're in Bali. Before this, you was in Thailand. Like, so what are your thoughts on both the two places so far? Okay, so I've been in I've been in Bali for like four days. So first off, Thailand. I love Thailand. Um, I've actually been to Thailand three times this year. I went in February with a few friends. It was a great experience. And then I went back home to you know launch one of my businesses. And then I came back in March. 
Um, it was cool. You know, the friends that I brought, they just didn't want to experience the, the country like I did. Um, so I decided to go back home and, you know, I basically waited a month until I came back to Thailand. It's, I mean, my, that's my favorite place in the world. I mean, every, everywhere I've been, Thailand, um, Dubai, London, Canada, Thailand is like overall the most best place I've been. But Bali right now, you know, these past 96 hours in Bali, it's been cool. You know, I actually started to like Bali. I want to experience more, so I can't come here though. But overall, Thailand is number one in my books out of everything. Work. So if y'all guys know on the list, so right now we're actually at a digital nomad, like a uh, co-working space. So they got little offices and whatnot here. So he been here for hours, just grinding away. So how do you balance uh, work and travel, like business, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you balance all that out? No, nah, that's, you know, what's actually amazing is that, um, being over here, we're exactly 12 hours on um, the difference from the East coast. So the amazing thing is when I wake up around, you know, 10 AM, it's 10 PM on the East coast. So I literally can ride all day while all my peers is asleep, edit my videos, get content. And once I go to sleep, I can post my content and wake up to a whole bunch of notifications. So the, the work balance life is actually easier being international than it is being whole. Um, truthfully, and that's just with me speaking, you know, so it's actually been amazing because it's complete opposite. When you're asleep, like you guys right now are asleep, we're making this video. By the time you watch this, you're gonna be waking up seeing this video, but we make this video, you know, like we're in the future of them. So it's a little <laughs> bit easier to, you know, balance my work life and everything like that. But yeah, I mean, I came out here, I don't got, you know, kids or anything. Um, all I got is my mom at home. So, you know, it's kind of easy to balance my work life and, you know, still making the phone calls, checking in with my family and making sure they're good. But people would be curious, what exactly do you do? Like, how are you making your income right now? Like, what are some opportunities for people? Like, you know, like, what do you have to share around that space? Okay. Um, so how I made my first, I made my first six, six figures trade. Um, I was one of those guys back in 2015. Um, I actually got into crypto. I got into the Forex mark, you know, Forex markets. I ended up joining a big, big company. Don't want to really say their name and give them too much clout. But um, it was one of the biggest Forex companies in the country. And, you know, it grew to over 400,000 people. And out of the 400,000 people, I actually was ranked number eight in the whole company. Um, so that's kind of where I made most of my money. Um, last year, you know, I decided to take a step away from the industry. Um, I really just wanted to experience something else. Um, I actually spent almost six years in that business and, you know, I just felt like I wanted to try something else. I wanted to, you know, just bet on myself. So over the past seven, eight months, I've been doing e-commerce. I've been doing digital products. Um, I started monetizing my social platforms, which I wasn't doing over the past few years um, in everything. You know, like I told you really, you know, I started off selling candy. Um, once I got to my 12th grade year of high school, I started cutting here. And, you know, from there, I just did whatever I could to make money. You know, I've always been, you know, somebody who always believed in multiple sources of income, um, you know, so when people ask me, you know, what I do, I just say I help people, you know, find their passion and turn their passion into a paycheck, you know, so that's kind of what I say I do. I don't have like a title, like I don't do this. I do everything. Uh, but when it comes to like, where do I make most of my money is selling digital products online and show people exactly how to travel and do exactly what we're doing right now. Trying to tell y'all, man, digital products. Let's, let's actually hit up a little bit because obviously you guys who watch my videos, you guys will know that's one of the things I do with digital products. And like one thing that I personally love about digital products is I get to teach what I know. I love teaching people. I love sharing game. So that's number one. Number two with digital products that I like is there's no inventory. You make it one time and then you might make it prove it over time, but there like is no cost of goods. So the profit margins on digital products is probably the highest like I don't know if there's a business where you got higher profit margins than digital products like if there is one I can't think of right now because there's literally like no there's barely any cost of good maybe no overhead I just know we're anything <laughs> we probably pay is the monthly subscription was it probably less than 25 50 bucks to just to operate the website right I mean you know utilize the tools I was just gonna show them right now sit you know they're here um I actually got my Shopify store yesterday I actually got two orders so I'm just gonna show y'all. Yesterday I was actually able to make what five hundred dollars while we were actually at the club. So yeah, yesterday um, I was actually able to make, as you guys see, I had two two hundred and fifty dollar orders, um, and that was actually people that decided to buy my course when it came to like you know how to travel, you know how to actually create products online, and you know start making money without any overhead, you know. So 
that's something that's been helping me, you know, stay afloat and be out here. You know, if I can have $500 day every day, you know, that's an extra, what, $3,500 a week. And so, you know, I just got goals that I set on myself while I'm out here and I just make sure that, you know, I'm completing every objective before I go outside or do anything else. That's amazing. So for you guys too, like overseas, $500, that goes far. Like $500 is, is could cover rent, depending on like where you're at, cover obviously your food expenses. So like, if you guys don't understand this, like when you're overseas, $500 might be in a lot of these places, the monthly income for uh, certain people in, in these countries. Like they might not even make $500 a whole month. So with, you know, what we're doing is we're able to take advantage of the, you know, the difference between currency values. Uh, and that's at, that's what Forex is right there too. So <laughs> if Forex is, you know, is the difference between currency values. So if we make our bread in USD and we're able to come to somewhere like Indonesia or Thailand, where, you know, the dollar is so much stronger, it makes it a lot easier to survive and a lot even like less, less uh, stress behind it. Cause like, you know, if you can have multiple popular holidays, if you can have a few in a month, regardless, you know what I'm saying? It's extra income for you. And so like to live overseas at the cost of living, the minimum I would say, from my experience so far, I'd say like, if you can make at least, I'd probably say at least $1,500 a month remotely, you can live overseas. Um, ideally, I would say you want to be at least two thousand dollars or more. So I'm a, I'm gonna ask you on the spot, like if you had to start over right now, what would you do to make two thousand dollars a month for Moly? Jeez, that's a that's an amazing question, right? I actually think I just seen somebody uh, give that answer. So if I had to start over right now, let's just say I had a hundred, maybe two hundred dollars to my name. Um, what I would do is I would actually create a Shopify store. Shopify actually has a promotion where it's a dollar, um, for the first three months. So that gives me 90 days and $3 overhead to create a website. Um, I will go on, you know, Alibaba, AliExpress, um, Zen drop, and I will look for a product that is, you know, being sold. Um, I will list that product online, you know, or, you know, I'll put that product on my website. I will create a, uh, Instagram or a TikTok, create short form content and basically start, you know, running it up on there. Once I get a few sales, put that money into some ads and from there start generating some income, you know, whether I'm selling that $10 ebook or a $15 ebook. And that's, you know, what's crazy is I actually, a girl is the one who inspired me. So if there's any ladies that's watching this, I got inspired because I seen um, a girl named Alice on TikTok. She was making videos of her videos to do hundreds of thousands of views. And I'm like, what is she selling? And then I clicked up her link and it was a $15 ebook. I'm like, what? She's making all this money off a $15 ebook? You know, and then I tested it out. I put an Instagram, you know, I put a story up on my Instagram, told people, hey, if you've ever been interested in learning from me, I got a $15 product and I was actually able to get a whole lot of sales, you know, the moment I started that. So if I had to start over and for anybody under, it's like, hey, I don't have thousands of dollars. I don't know what to do. Just take time to really figure out exactly, you know, what it is that, your customer, your audience, and your niche is interested in it. So yeah, I, like I said, I would probably just create an online store, sell digital products, so I don't have to worry about overhead, and um, start from there. And then once I scale that up, use that money to run ads, just to get more and more customers to see my product. So that's probably the first thing I would do from what I know now in my experience. That's dope. So earlier you were talking about you know the things you do, and the key thing I've got out of that is diversification. What do you think the secret is to being able to identify opportunities? Do you think you were just born with that eye to see things? Or do you think kind of you just learned over time? Because one thing I tell people, I actually talked about a couple of the videos, is that everything is money. If you understand that one principle that everything is money, especially now in this digital age, we got social media. I mean, like, we have the craziest trends. Like, some of you guys might not have any clue about what I'm about to talk about. But on TikTok, um, there's this trend called, like, NPC trend. Ooh. And people are on there literally acting like, uh, basically like just NPCs to me, like it's like not real people. And they're just like, like robots. And they're getting sent, like people are literally sending them like these little digital gifts, which translates to the money. So people will go live for like a few hours and make $500, $800 off of literally just kind of just acting. It's just, it's, it's, it's kind of bullish, but, but hey, they're making bread. I mean, that's, it yeah. also the silly end, but. From that, you got, you know, content, you have uh, sponsorships, you got affiliate marketing. Uh, I mean, now there's with the rise of AI, there's opportunity there with becoming, you know, an expert on how to use AI. And if you can 
understand these plat these uh, systems, you can get paid to go implement, you know, AI into businesses. Because so many people they don't have time to learn these different things. Like even like if you ask me, what would I do if I had to start over? Like I would literally probably be something around an agency model where I would learn to master a software, mm. and then once I had that skill set down very well, I would go help businesses integrate that software into their business. And that's just off key right there. And it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. Like just learn how to like learn skill sets and be able to, uh, you know, make, make an income. Well, that's a player. So back to the question. So like identifying, uh, identifying uh, opportunities, like what, what do you think the secret is? Oh, I mean, honestly, I feel like when it comes to identifying opportunities and I guess, this is going back to the 18 year old version of me to me wait till I was 23 years old to finally take opportunity seriously. Um, I guess it's a mindset thing. You know, when I was 18, my mindset, and there's some 18 year olds that mindset is already an entrepreneur type. They already know what to, you know, do that. So I felt like my surroundings, um, I'm sure you guys heard this before, but you're the average of the five people you leg around. So when I first, you know, got out of high school, my friend group, they wanted to party, they wanted to go out, they wanted to smoke, drink every weekend, and that was the environment. I didn't have anybody in my circle telling me, hey, let's go start a business. Hey, let's use this money that we made and let's do this, you know? So I think that was probably the first thing that I did was I had to identify who I was around. Um, once I seen that I was the smartest person in my circle and nobody had any opportunity, I had to, you know, just basically tell my friends, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see y'all later. And, um, I kind of was alone for the first six months as an entrepreneur. I kind of locked myself in the house. I decided not to go out. I literally would be on Instagram, see my friends partying. But I would just kind of like, I don't know, I feel like I deserve more life and I feel like I want to experience more in life. So once I did that, I started getting into books, started reading more personal development. Um, and then I just started thinking about people that was a little bit smarter than me, that knew a little bit more than me. And um, when it came to being able to see opportunities, I got into a girl I just didn't say no. Whether I didn't think I could do it, I was just like, you know what, let's try. The worst thing that happened is I, you know, it's like the worst thing that happened is I go back to what I was doing before. That literally it. So it's dark. So you would say that basically the key is is not being afraid to fit. Yeah, hundred percent. Not be afraid. Not be unwilling to take action. And the one thing I realized that separates people who are successful from those who are not is uh, is just limited perspective. So many people. Uh, we'll go spend money on bottles and, and just, you know, nonsensical things. And then when it comes to the opportunity, they'll overanalyze and they'll be like, oh, this is a scam. This is a scam. Like, like you're afraid to lose $200 or like $100. Like, like people be afraid to invest in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the big differences is like, you know, people who make it and don't is the ones who do are like, you know what, what you just said, the worst case scenario is, okay, I lose a little bit of bread. Obviously, the bigger the opportunity, the more you want to research. But for things that don't really cost you much, that will only cost you time and maybe a little bit of bread, it's like, what's the worst that could happen? Especially like, for example, if he has an ebook that that he could offer you information that could potentially be life changing and only cost fifteen dollars, you're like, oh man, like I don't know, like why would you overthink such a small amount? I need right? Yeah. Then you're gonna go spend, you know, twenty dollars on a drink at a bar, and you're not gonna think twice about it. But then, like, opportunity, like, ah, you know, I don't know. But I think that is key, is just not being afraid to fail and take chances. So with that question, I want to roll up into the next question of, a lot of entrepreneurs suffer with uh, uh, the shiny object syndrome, right? Because when you hear about diversification, people are not automatically think out the gate, I need to have seven streams. I need to be doing this, 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 and that. Do you think it's important early on to focus on one thing? and then expand later on? Or do you think that, hey, just immediately get an entrepreneurship, start a shopping five store, uh, you know, open up a dispensary, do the, you know, start an agency, uh, do crypto. Do you think people should like just try everything? Or like, what do you think? No, nah, oh, to be honest, that's, a, that's actually, the reason why I didn't have any success at the beginning was I was trying to be a jack of all trades. So when I first got into the industry, I kind of already had a side hustle when I was, you know, back home in North Carolina, and then I was doing this business, and I was doing this, that, and the other, and none of it was making me the money I desired. Um, so I felt like, you know, once I just, you know, focused on one thing and got good at that, I think, you know, my mentor told me basically, if you spend 10,000 hours on one thing, you will be a professional at that one thing. And, um, you know, I spent 10,000 hours learning how to trade Forex. That was the first thing that I really felt like I wanted to learn. I seen Wolf of Wall Street, and I just had that 
Wall Street with talent and making money. <laughs> and uh, no, no cap, like I spent hours, I spent money, I lost money, and I would, you know, use the money I was making for my job. I would invest it back into my account, blow that, work more hours and do the same thing. So I felt like, you know, if I would have gave up, I would have never knew what was on the other side. Uh, but I continue to keep going and watch our master that like it took me at least four years before I started doing my oven bigs, you know, but I really perfected that to whereas I can get on my phone right now, spend two hours and make, you know, uh, not saying it, but I can make somebody's monthly salary in a couple of days, you know, so that's definitely something that I say that that's a skill set that I will forget because I spent so much time. So I would definitely tell any young entrepreneur, you know, once you find something study it, learn it, fall in love with it. And once you master it and you felt like you hit certain goals, then you move to the next thing. But if you try to juggle too much, you're trying to be an artist, a rapper, a singer, like it's not gonna work out. So I would definitely say choose one, stick to that. Don't worry about anybody to the left or to the right of what they're doing and do what you gotta do to be successful at that one thing. It's fire. Like one thing you said about like keep going you know, and not quitting, even after you face frustration, reminds me of the saying, you probably heard it like three feet from gold where it's like, there's this is like this uh this image and um it's, it's two guys kind of like digging for gold. Yep. And the dude turns his back and basically he's giving up right before he's about to break through that wall that was gonna like, where there's a bunch of gold or diamonds there, whatever. Yep. Um, sitting back with it. And so so many people can think, oh, you know, I've worked at this for so long, it's never gonna happen. And you just never know how close you are to striking oil, right? Sometimes you like continue to, drill and drill and drill and at a certain point you might be like man ain't no point in drilling anymore it's a good so yeah i was saying yeah, cold up there that, that oops my bad that's it right there he was this close to getting the diamonds and he walked away and the other guy on top is still going yeah that's crazy that you said that it's literally the secret though is like i think once again one of those principles other than being willing to fail is being, being willing to keep going even when you know you're frustrated you think that this is no longer even reality because especially with something like trading is one of the things that will really expose you as a person because like the mental clarity and the stress for trading because trading is like you have a day where like you come out the gate like well I'm about let me give a quick story about me like I had tapped into trade like two years ago and I got off to a hot start like I was trading Bitcoin it was in consolidation and I was just you know like I, it was like it was working crazy like you know I was selling when it reached uh our resistance. And uh, I was buying with every support, and it was a, that's just how it was just bounces. It was very predictable. So I took a count. I took a, I took like two thousand dollars, flipped it like ten k. But the key thing with trading is greed. So you think you hot? Greed. I was like, you know what? So keep going. I, I think I, I did withdraw a little bit, so I didn't like completely lose everything. But like I went from ten k and like lost most of it. So like I just learned the lesson there. I'm like, yo, it's like one, you gotta really. Focus on education, but the emotional part of that is like, you know, like it's, it's frustrating. You know, trading is one of the things that will really, uh, you have to uh, work on in like emotional intelligence in that field. So yeah, I mean like just keep going, uh, learn from your mistakes, stay focused. So, all right, we talked about, you know, ways to make income and kind of give some experience on that. Let's jump back to traveling. So you've been to over 14 countries. I know you got some travel game you could probably uh, drop to the audience and it seems like, you know, if you've, been to, if you've been to 14 countries, you know a little thing or two, say, you have to have a lot of to go to that many places. The average person obviously wanted to see probably two countries, so 14 or more, and that's very impressive. Now, how did you say, so I think you said your first place you went to was Dubai. Uh, the that was a long time. Actually, my first trip was to Mexico. To Mexico, okay. One flight was Dubai. So I would say the do's and don'ts. Now, number one, when I first went international, I thought everything's like America. So, you know, my first, I don't want to say my first um, international trip was bad, uh, but I didn't budget. I didn't, you know, do research. So when I got there, it was kind of like, I was so excited to be there that I didn't really know where to go, you know? And um, from there, you know, just give me all some game. I'm going to say one, plan out where you want to go. Um, that was something that I did. I got a piece of paper and I wrote down the top three cities that I wanted to travel to and I wanted to experience. From there, I went on Google and I typed in things to do, you know, things to do in um, Thailand, things to do in Bali. And I got a list of all the places to go. I looked at my budget. Okay, what can I do for free? And what can I do that's not outside my, you know, outside my comfort zone? Um, and, you know, from there, I mean, you know, I just kind of plant my days. And that's that's what another thing that I'll say is that sometimes you got to go alone. Because when you go with other people, you're now on their time. 
and if people are not moving at the time, we won't, we won't be able to experience it. So my first time going to Thailand, I had three friends with me, but everybody was taking too long to shower. Oh, I don't got enough money. I don't want to do that. So I didn't really get to have fun that I wanted, you know? So um, once I start, you know, living for me and start really thinking about what I wanted to do, it was a little bit easier to trap it, you know? So even study other people, I went on YouTube. That's, YouTube University is free, you know, and that's how I even came across him. I went on YouTube and I was like, okay, this is my first time going to Thailand alone. Uh, let me watch some other people that's doing it and let me see where he's going. So I was messaging him before we even met and I'm like, hey, where are you going? Hey, what should I do? Hey, what's a nice nightclubs? You know, I was asking these questions and then, you know, even when I see him out here, I'm like, how long are you about to be out there? All right, you know what? I'm gonna go out there in two weeks, but I'll watch his videos. I seen the do's and don'ts of, you know, Thailand and what I should do. Um, even when it came to like just budget and million, how much a little bit can go a long way here. A lot of you guys gotta understand in these third world countries, yes, it's beautiful to you on social media, but to be honest, not that expensive. You know, I think my flight was the most expensive thing. And once I've been here, I've actually saved more money being here than actually being at home. You know, so I would definitely just, you know, start, start, I won't say start small, but like, you know, Mexico is not that far. You know, if you in North Carolina um, or even Atlanta, the airport to get a flight to Cancun is like a hundred dollars, you know, 150 round trip if you do it ahead of time, you know, and I would say try somewhere like that or even go to Puerto Rico, you know, we need a passport to go there, you know, so there's certain places like that. And then from there, you know, take it up the next level, you know, so I would definitely say that study, do research, watch other people's videos, gather information and then from there set your plan and you know stick to that plan and, and do it you know that's the thing you got to do is just take that leap of faith and just go and don't think about oh what could happen don't think about the bad things just try it and i'm telling you you will fall in love like that's that's what i live for now is traveling and experiencing it because you know and i know we got friends back home that don't want to go nowhere they don't know that it's a possibility they don't think they can afford it, you know? So I feel like I am um, motivation to my friend group. You know, they'll see me here. They're excited, they're motivated to even go out there and try it. So, you know, that's why we making this video is so you guys can see that, look, it's nothing different about us. You know, we just decided to do something different and, you know, like minds think alike, and that's why, you know, we connected. So if you're watching this right now, I would definitely say, go over his videos, watch all his videos from the very first video to the newest video and just take notes and learn. And um, that's exactly what I did. So, you know, I'm, I'm a student. I watch other people and I just duplicate it. That's fine. So he mentioned when he was uh, going overseas was like using Google. I'm going to give you all some extra game because now with AI, like tap into chat GP3 and go in there like, and you can be like, hey, I'm going to Thailand for two weeks. This is my budget. Play me out a trip. And boom, like you can have a whole trip planned out and organized a place to go. That's all cool. automated. Like, so like take advantage of the software will, help, you know, make your life a lot easier. So, um, I know one of the things you, uh, we were talking about off camera, like, you know, you were in the credit space as well. Like, what are some like credit travel hacks? Cause like I took the credit card points and free flights and hotel to upgrade, like any, any game on that? Yeah. Um, so first off, if you're on here, I believe if you got like a six and then D, you can get an American Express card. Um, some people don't ever know that they never even tried to apply for one. Um, and I didn't really know that until I got around some friends that was in a credit space. And, you know, with that, when you use these cards, you get travel points. Um, anytime you spend a card. So I, I feel like with me, I was always the friend who would use his debit, you know, who would use his debit or his credit card to purchase stuff. So when I got Airbnbs back home, all my friends give me the money. I use my credit card. I use that money. I pay off my credit card. And now I'm able to have more points. So that's definitely one credit hack that I would say is, you know, try small credit cards and i would say get a secure credit card so if you're on here right now you can get a secure credit card with almost any bank even chime right and with a secure credit card you put the money on there that you that you want to use you pay it off on time and it builds your reports whereas you can go and apply for another credit card and now the banks are going to give you money so i would say opium is the best you can do you know um i used thousands of my dollars before to travel and it was cool but once I learned about credit, I'm like, oh, you're telling me that I don't got to use my money. I can use somebody else's money and just pay it back on time. And that will give me travel points. And when I go out to eat, I can use that, have free points there, free hotels. Like, it is crazy to say it, but I've been out of the country for at least 60 days. And when it comes to travel, when it comes to where I'm staying at, activities, 
I'll probably spit less than 1700. I'm just throwing a number out there because I don't ever think I spit that much. But I mean, my, my hotel room right now is $102 a week. In America, I would have been paying $102 plus taxes a night. Yeah. You know, so when it comes to credit, man, that's a, it, there's a lot that I could tell y'all about that. But if you don't have a credit card and people are telling you credit is bad, they just don't know a lot, you know? And I mean, I grew up with a mom, I grew up with family members that didn't know anything that they told me, don't get a credit card, it's gonna hurt you. But when I learned, you know, why I should have credit, it's, it's crazy, but a debit card is nothing. You know, having a credit card just takes you so, you know, it just takes you to a whole nother level and there's just so much benefits of using it the right way, you know? So, you know, I, I give y'all some more game on the next, on the next video about credit. Um, but yeah, man, if y'all got a credit card, I would definitely say, you know, read the fine print, read the rewards that you get with certain credit cards because they have, um, a whole lot of discounts and a whole lot of things that you oh, I know offer like travel insurance too, and like travel protection and like, especially if you're overseas, like obviously with credit cards, it's a lot easier if an uh, unauthorized purchase happens for you to be able to fight that versus a debit card loan won't work. But like, sometimes you might have inconveniences when you travel or you might miss a flight. A lot of times, depending on credit cards you have, you might have a benefit to where like they'll like reimburse like the fee if you have to like you miss a flight like this different thing so yeah do your research um one, one youtube page my personal like friend check out credit brian he's like a million plus subscribers on youtube he drops a lot of game on the credit space so if y'all want some more go check him out tell him i sent you um but let's talk about uh solo tropic so that's like but everywhere you've been and like, i've been doing this now for nine months and so i will tell y'all Solo travel is not for everybody because, like, one of the things you will be, if you speed around people with solo travel, you go and go to the towns, you're going to be lonely. It's different. You got to learn to completely look out for yourself um, and, you know, just be responsible. Like, you know, a lot of times I go out drinking at night back home. I might be a little bit more kind of freestyle. I know my friends look out for me overseas. <laughs> you got to make sure, like, okay, you know, don't get too crazy because, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to look out for you because. You got to make sure you make it back home and whatnot. <laughs> so what, did, what has been your experience so far, like solo traveling? Like what are some tips you give to people to make, like whether it's, you know, for for, for guys or girl, anybody, like what would you say some things are to keep in mind, like solo traveling? Like just tell me. Yeah, so, um, so this has been my first time really traveling alone for, you know, a few weeks. I mean, it's been 60 days now. So he's been doing it for months. I've been doing it for 60 days. So. My first week, I actually had a bad experience. I, and again, like, I want to stop you guys from going anywhere. Um, I love traveling. But I actually got drugged my second week because I was at a bar. I went to the bathroom. I didn't, you know, watch my cup. And somebody put something in my drink. And I woke up the next day. My debit cards was $500 was spent on my debit cards. Um, you know, I lost some stuff that I had with me, but a lot of stuff that happened and I completely didn't know anything. So, you know, when it comes to a woman, um, if you travel it alone, I would definitely say, just be aware of everybody. Don't let every smile fool you. Um, and always be aware of, you know, your, you know, to be on your P's and Q's. That's one thing I would say. Um, other than that, you know, just, just move smart, move correct. You know, I haven't really had too many, like I can say being alone, I didn't do a lot. I'm just kind of like, dang, going to the club, I'm. This is good for it. So I actually stopped myself from having it for me because I felt like, oh, I'm alone. You know, and then when I snapped to reality, I'm like, yo, this is your life. Go out there and just live. You know, what's hurting? You know, you're, you're meeting new people and it gets you out your comfort zone to talk to other people. You know, so I felt like it brought me back to my middle school days when I had to go to, you know, parties and talk to girls by myself. So being out here, um, you will meet a lot of people that's just like me. I feel like Bali, I've seen a whole lot more solo travelers than in the other place that I've been. And a lot of them from all over and they're entrepreneurs just like us. So it's a little bit easier to connect with people. Um, but when it just comes to like the club scene and things like that, just, just watch it. So um, I would say, you know, don't trust everybody, you know, and if you do have a friend, just make sure your eyes are open, making sure that, you know, nobody's touching your drinks, it is, a, it is a lot that I can say about that, but I would just say just keep your eyes open, be aware, you know, even myself, I'm, I'm six two, you know, I'm like 198 pounds and I got drugged by a girl, you know, so at the end of the day, if that happened to me, that's just letting you know that it can happen to anybody, you know, so I would definitely say stay aware, um, and if y'all want to watch that video, he'll probably show y'all that video, but that was the craziest experience that I ever had, um, yeah, that, that was, that was crazy, you know. 
And it did make me want to leave. It was like, you know, should I go back home? I have family members like, hey, you should come back. But I didn't let that stop me from what I said, you know, and I had a goal set in mind. So I just kind of had to watch, watch myself when I moved forward. You know, so I would definitely say that. Respects. And something like that could happen anywhere. So definitely to never, this applies to whether you're home, like your home country, state, city, whatever. Don't ever leave your drink unattended. Right. Like, don't ever do that because, like, you open up the door for And this usually mainly applies to women. But as y'all can see, it can happen to men as well. If you understand, like, you know, certain places you go where there was a little more motivation to drug a man, right? Um, yeah, just, like, stay on your P's and Q's. Like, stay, you know what I'm saying? Stay vigilant. Don't get too lax to where, like, you know, you think that everything is sweet because you'll find out that everything is not sweet. I'm saying there's things that, for the most part, you know, have a great time, but obviously there are people that don't always have your best interests at heart. So yeah, stay safe, man. Stay safe out here, stay focused. So before we wrap this up, man, is there anything else that you want to drop for the audience? Anything, uh, any questions you think I've, I, that I missed that could be of value to to the listener? Yeah, I got a question. I got a couple of questions for you, uh, Ebony. Uh, so one, you know, we come from the same state, and I know when we were talking, you know, you you didn't go to college. You know, I went to college to give it a try. Um, I, I got what thirty five thousand dollars in student loan debt. Figured out that college wasn't for me. Dropped out my sophomore year. Basically, I was a couple years behind, and I had to basically start over. So, can you just tell me about your you know your journey as an entrepreneur? What made you not go to college? And what was the first business that you started that kind of got you on track to you know where you are now? Yeah. So like. To, to kind of go way back, like uh, like many entrepreneurs, I kind of felt that like in my spirit at a young age, I didn't really want to work with uh, work for anybody, even when I was younger. So my first thing, I like, sold candy on the bus away to school in the third grade. Um, I would go buy the little eight pack of fun size candies for like a dollar a pack back then. And you know I'm saying inflation, it cost over that now, but I would flip it. I would make like $2 profit, reinvest, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of learned some business principles early, but uh, you know, life, so I had a couple like jobs in between Obviously in high school, I think my first official job was Chick Fil A. Shout out to Chick Fil A. Dang, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> my pleasure. Weird out, bro. You know, the my pleasure stuff. <laughs> even after I left there, I kept saying my pleasure for a while, so I eventually started to saying, you know, I'm saying you're welcome again. But uh, so yeah, uh, just I've always been like learning though. Uh, even when I had a job, just entrepreneurship always, you know, continue to repeat my curiosity and. My whole perspective on life has always been that, like, you know, life is short. I want to do as much as I can. I just don't like the idea of being in a box. I don't like anyone trying to put me in a box. Like, I'm not one dimensional. You know what I'm saying? Even when it comes to entrepreneurship, if I say when I was younger, I want to be an entrepreneur, they say, oh, but like, what type of business? I'm like, whatever business makes sense in the moment. Because, like, if you would have asked me when I was younger and I said, you know what, when I get older, I want to own a blockbuster. Blockbuster ain't around no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Netflix and streaming is a thing now. So, like when it comes to entrepreneurship is, a, is adaptability and, and, you know, in a changing world. So anyway, fast forward to uh, like after graduation, um, I did, I went to community college for two semesters, was going to go after a business degree, was gonna get my associates and then transfer to a four year. Um, I did this path because I wasn't a hundred percent sure college was a move. Now honestly, the only reason why I went is cause I never really cared about the degree. But I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go to network. But now that I was like, I don't need a network at a college. But anyway, I did very good while I was in school. I had like a 3.5 GPA, but then like the second semester, I was just like, I'm not interested in this. Like, I want to just focus on my business, which for you guys who watch my other videos, I talk about it like pressure washing um, is the first business basically that helped me be where I like, be here right now. Like um, I started off pressure washing first in high school as a side hustle. Well, I was cutting grass before that actually. And then I transitioned to pressure washing because I feel like it was less competition. I'm like, everybody has a lawnmower. So me and my whole would go mow lawns on the set on Saturdays, knock on doors. But as the other kids in the neighborhood had seen us making money, they kind of got like, oh, I want to make money too. So they would pull up their lawnmowers and start knocking doors. So more competition. So eventually I came across pressure washing. I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, anybody, everybody ain't got a pressure washer. So I'm like, this could be a little untapped niche. So you know, I did that, like, and I had a lot of failure in that at first, but I just didn't have any knowledge on the industry. So I, I fell for a little bit, took a break for two years, came back, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take this seriously and do better. And at this point, I'm like 18, 19, I'm making like two, three thousand dollars a month. Good money versus being a Chick fil A, I was making like seven fifty an hour. So uh I would go make three hundred dollars in a day. I'm like, yo, it took me 
two weeks to make for like three fifty at Chick Fil A. I'm like, I just made this in a day. So I thought it was a stuff. I'm like, yo, I don't know how to talk to me. Like, I have to make three hundred in a day. Like, what you doing? You make it eight thousand dollars? Like, yeah, don't fuck with you not like. That. <laughs> but so that that showed me though that there's money in this industry, and from there I started to get more education, and which led me to start a YouTube channel. So you guys can look at that right now. It's uh, Zay Wonder on YouTube. I got like I think it's like twenty one thousand. And I have so many videos just sharing game around the pressure washing space. So as I was making money in the industry and learning, my biggest thing is if I make mistakes and I fail certain things, I want to make the next guy's life easier. I think it's stupid if I've already went down a path and like, yo, this this is what you should not do. And I see a guy get ready to go down that path, guy or girl, whatever. I'm a, I'm a, I'm the type of person like, hey, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna at least try to like warn you, like, hey, if you do this, this, and this, this will give you a better outcome than this and this. I'm not the type of person who's gonna like figure something out and they like just watch you fail. Like I'm, I literally can't. I'm like I'm gonna at least try to give you some game. So that's what the YouTube channel is about. Cause I like, say, hey guys, um, if you're a beginner, like don't make these mistakes. Do this and that. I launched a course, so I begin to make money from uh, the course. I actually made my first 10k online uh, before I was ever even monetized by YouTube, which is some game right there. To come on YouTube, sell your own product, cause that's how you can get sponsorship before the AdSense. Like AdSense is cool and all, but if you have your own product, you have way more control. Because if I have a brand new channel and it starts to get views, like this channel right here got over like 100,000 views before it reached monetization. So I didn't get paid for those views because I hadn't I didn't have the, I wasn't in the program yet. So that was wasted views basically because I, I got no money for it. But if you have your own product, you can make money off the rip. So I had my business making me money. I had YouTube paying me from the AdSense. I had the course paying me. Uh, which the course pays me still to this day. That YouTube channel still pays me. I had affiliate marketing because there's a certain products I was using that I was recommending to the audience. So I would say too, when we were talking about diversification earlier, is that diversify inner before you diversify outer. So this means like you have a business right now, any business not for you, a content business. I don't care what you're doing. Add content, talk about your business, document it. Like you don't know what to say, just document what you're doing, even if you're brand new. As you learn and grow, People are going to be curious on, uh, like, you're an inspiration to people. And it's real if you document it and say, you know what? I went from zero to $1,000 a month. Now, that might, a thousand might not be a, a lot of money a month, right? But uh, a newbie, a thousand is something, right? So at that point, you are qualified to teach. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not saying how to make $10,000 a month, then that's cap. I'm all about authenticity and transparency. So you can teach at the level you're at. So you can create information around ball from zero to a thousand. That is a niche, right? Because you're going to have people, beginners, intermediate, and then experts. So an expert model will be, you're not talking about how to go from zero to a thousand. You're talking about how to take your business from 10K on up to like $50,000 a month with its systems and stuff like that. So the people, your audience will determine the product, but that's just a little bonus for you guys right there is how you can diversify. Is take your business, turn into a content business, get paid from assets, uh, that can lead to sponsorships, affiliate marketing, create a digital product. And now you just created at least three streams of income with one business. And so you're not all over the place, right? It didn't take me any extra energy really to just record the business I was already doing it, right? And it didn't take away my focus because I'm not having to, you know, focus on different subjects. I focus on one thing and I just found other ways to make money from that one thing. If you could do that, you know what I'm saying? You could do this. And so that, I eventually got that business to over 10 grand a month. Uh, and then once I decided I wanted to leave overseas, I made a little raise, man, had my younger brother take over. And so, yeah, so now like I'm doing digital marketing. I run basically ads for a couple of companies, um, help them generate leads online. So that's one opportunity for you guys that you can look into um, digital products, then YouTube, and then sometimes like a little bit with affiliate marketing. So that's kind of like my short story so another question that i had you know for anybody that is entrepreneurs that's watching this right now that you know was having roll bumps in their career you know who are some of your mentors who are people that you watched that kind of motivated you and that you watched and learned different you know techniques from that got you you know over your roll bumps and to the success point where you felt like okay i'm good i can leave i can travel who are a few people that you would recommend to some of the people that's watching this right now Ooh, that's kind of a hard question. Let me think about that. Like I have this, I would say this, when it comes to mentors, different mentors are good for this, different seasons of your life. And some people, like you might outgrow 
or some people might have just been very good for that season. So growing up, one of the big people I listened to was uh, a guy named Zig Ziglar, mm -hmm. who has since passed away, but he was a big inspiration in my life when I was younger of just putting my mind on the right path. To this day, one of the things he said that sticks to me is you can have everything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want in life. And that right there, that is gold. Because you take that way of thinking and you approach any business, any opportunity with the idea of I'm going to serve others. When you serve enough other people, money can't help but come to you because your uh, your uh, incentive, like your motivation is, is, is to help people. And when you do that, it's like it, people are going to want to give that to you. So if I can solve problems, other people's problems, right? I'm going to get paid for that. Like think about a mechanic or anything, you know what I'm saying? Like by helping people get their cars back on the road, you know what I'm saying? Helping them get to work and, you know, and, and get their kids to school. They, they make an income, right? That's all money is. It's just literally solving a problem, serving other people. If you can serve people, you can make an income. So Zig was a, 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 a big person um, in my early, early years of life. I mean, I've listened to like Jim Rome. Most people I listen to are more mint, uh, are more my mindset because mindset is everything. Like hundred percent. There's not so many people I listen to around the making money because that can get a little icky. I'm more focused on how my brain is wired because if my brain is wired the right way, once, I, like I said earlier, everything is money. So if I just know how to think, like teach a man a fish, feed him for a lifetime, give him a fish, you know what I'm saying, you will feed him for a day. So like, I want my brain to be wired to where I know how to fish and I can fish in any lake or ocean or whatever. So I'll, if I have to say like newer people now, like I, I like Alex Hermosi on the business side, like Alex Hermosi on YouTube. Everybody, man, I, I just stopped watching. You've got somebody been talking to me about um, how to scale this page from like 300,000 to millions of followers now on multiple businesses. Yeah, um, so who so. got me into reading books, oddly enough, this is a guy named Ty Lopez. He got this ad years ago. He was like, here in my garage, this Lamborghini. And just seeing him, like, I read three books a day. And I was like, that's fire, like three books a day. Like, it just piqued my interest because like, in school, I wasn't really that interested in education. Um, or I thought I wasn't. But it was just the way that the information was being given to me where I wasn't really intrigued. Once I graduated, I became sort of like a nerd, like everything, intrigues me because I realized like one thing I talked about to my friends with like yo connecting the dots if you can connect the dots in life you realize that everything in life is connected you can learn business from ecosystems from like looking at nature and like and you understand that seasons are cycles so that's a, a business principle like, like you know you're going to go through cycles of business what does the, the world go through the world goes through cycles of seasons so you got winter fall you know what I'm saying you got to understand that each one of these seasons there's different things that happen, you know what I'm saying, that, that change the environment. So, um, you know, you can learn marketing from looking at different things. So once you can connect the dots, but once again, this comes down to how your brain is wired. So I say, if anything, if you're just getting started, focus on mindset, invest in your mental, like the opportunities will change. So someone might have a course on how to make a million in crypto. Someone might have a course on how to make a million in FBA, but so a lot of these businesses are here today, gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But if you know how to think, you will always be able to, to to find the new opportunity that um that is existing. And there's a book called like Blue Ocean versus Red Ocean. Maybe y'all have heard of it, but Blue Ocean just talks about uh like the Red Ocean means like sharks. It's like a lot of competition. Everyone no really no real innovation. Blue Blue Ocean means that you are maybe even in the same niche, but you're doing something different. Like your revolution that NMSA is different from what everybody else is doing. You've created a new ocean of your own. That's why it's blue. Then the sharks that they get. So, and that right there comes down to once again, is how you think. So actually I'm gonna give you guys a book. That's one of my favorite books is The Palace of Conscious Mind. Uh, and that's a great book. Uh, the Magic of Thinking Big. Uh, I was reading that. Yeah, what, 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 what books do you got? What books do you got? And, um, the Power of Positive Thinking. Uh, that's one, right? Cause your mind always plays tricks with you. So I would definitely say that i have how to work friends that influence people it's a good book too that's a book that i'm reading now that will help me with solo traveling as well because <laughs> we're not up there for a key thing from that book is uh the most important word and anyone like in based in the human dictionary or like or to anyone is their name right and that's something i struggle with sometimes that when i'm meeting people is like oh like you know i introduce myself and I'm just so, I'm so focused on make sure like, you know, I come across as like, you know what I'm saying? My, like the perception that they'll say their name, 
and then I'll immediately forget it. I'll be feeling so bad by hearing this. It's like self mistaken. Like I'm like, so remember remember people's names because it does it is a big deal when like you meet someone like one time you see them again they say your name kind of like oh man like hey like you really remember my name like and so little things like that can open doors for you because you never know who you're talking to. So I'm telling y'all this because I'm telling myself this to remember people's names. So I had to remind myself about that one principle from that book right there. But anyway, you go ahead, continue. <laughs> the last book I would say is probably the first one. A lot of y'all that's watching this is, you know, um, Think Rich, Grow Rich. You know, that was the first thing that I really watched and listened to that it's, you know, changed my whole mindset on money, on life, and everything, you know. So at the end of the day, if y'all watching this, man, I would definitely say, you know, find a mentor, find somebody, and, you know, start now. You know, you either start later and you regret the things or you start now and you just go ahead and, you know, figure it out. So and that's the question that I got for you, bro. You know, thanks, man. I appreciate you coming on and letting, man. All right. And having this conversation. Where can people uh, keep up with you at? Any, whatever you said, though, is going to be in the description. But you can shout yourself out. Instagram, YouTube. You got a channel. Make some fly, some fire vlogs. So y'all check out this channel. Get editing, man. His skills are nice. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Banks with four Z's. Four Z's. You find me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Same name. On all platforms. So y'all make sure y'all tap in. And if y'all got more questions, then maybe y'all want a part two. We'll give y'all a part two. Y'all didn't drop three questions under the comments. And we'll make sure we answer those questions for y'all in the next video. For sure. And until next time, I don't care to hit that subscribe button. As you know, see y'all next time. Peace out. Peace.